Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. Whether you're worshiping here in person or online from home, we are so glad that you are here this morning. If you are visiting with us, we ask that you fill out the perforated part of our bulletin and place it in the offering plate as it is passed. Our annual Fat Tuesday Mardi Gras pancake dinner is Tuesday, February 21st at 6.30 p.m. Reservations are due today. Mardi Gras attire is welcome, but not required, and I hope to see many of you there. All are welcome to begin the season of Lent at the Ash Wednesday service on February 22nd at 7.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Please note that the time has changed to 7.30 to accommodate our Wednesday evening community dinner. Again, the Ash Wednesday service is at 7.30 on February 22nd. But if you show up early, it's not a problem. The Youth and Family Bowling Outing is next Sunday, February 19th. Please RSVP to me by tomorrow. The February board meeting is next Sunday, immediately following worship. Please submit your reports by Thursday. The February Avenues newsletter went out last week. If you did not receive it and you would like to be added to our mailing list, you can contact me in the office. A reminder that our elevator is temporarily out of service, and unfortunately, we do not have a good timeline of when it will be repaired, but it is probably going to be a while. We apologize for the inconvenience and deeply appreciate your patience. And with that, let us enter into worship together.
Please be seated. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Our Lord and our Redeemer, we pray. Let us pray. God, the maker, the sustainer of the universe, the one who makes life possible through the week, we seek things that would please us, even our prayers are all about what you can do for us. And there is so much we ask of you because it's only through you life is possible. It is because of you that all things are secure. It's because of you that we can walk through even the valley of shadow of darkness and fear no evil. And so it is only proper for us to come before you and ask for so many things. But today in this worship service, we are mindful that our worship is our offering to you. What we do here, we do it so that it would be pleasing in your sight. Our gathering, O oh God, we pray that would be acceptable before you. So today, we are mindful of your presence in our midst. May we not do anything during this sacred time for our own pleasing, but may we do everything so that we would adore you and glorify your holy name. To that end, we offer ourselves, our praise, and our adoration before you, knowing that you are listening. And now that you're listening, we begin our prayers. We pray for our personal well-beings, for our families, friends, our community, and the world. We ask that your tender mercies would be abundant in our lives, that by your grace we would live and thrive. We also ask that you would bless us so that we would be a blessing to others. Pray for our world. Earthquakes all forms of natural disaster, lives that are being devastated. It seems so overwhelming. We think of those who have lost so much. We offer their grief and their pain before you, asking that your healing presence would be with them. We give you thanks for all those who are responding to this disaster, those who are putting their lives in harm's way. And then we pray about disasters we create, war, hatred, division, even hunger and poverty, things we could avoid, things we could do to make life better for others. We ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your strength. We give you thanks for the church. May the church continue to find its voice in the midst of all the distortions that are around us. 
We give you thanks for Madison Avenue Christian Church. Continue to lead us. Bless every person who dedicate themselves to your service through the life of this church. Continue to be with us throughout this worship service. Hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we <clears throat> and lead us not into temptation, <clears throat> and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture is Matthew 5, 21 through 26. You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council. And whoever says, You fool, shall be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before, before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Make friends quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court. Lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out till you have paid the last penny.
So today's lectionary is not as short as Matt read it. It's longer than that. But I cut it. <laughs> because afterwards, the text spills into lust, adultery, and then it goes on to talk about divorce. I don't want to talk about divorce. <laughs> and then the text goes further. And Jesus starts talking about plucking out your eyes and chopping off your hands. And I looked at that text and said, oh my goodness. I know worship can be painful but it does not have to be that painful where we are encouraging people to pluck eyes and chop hands. But more importantly, I wanted to focus on the worship aspect. Life without worship is a life without energy, excitement, capacity to dream, because worship is coming before the one who is the creator, sustainer of the universe, the one who further beautifies the world, and staying in the presence of this awesome God everything else seems so pale and boring and for people of faith the great gift is to set apart a time when we can sit in the presence of the one who is above all in all who is the Alpha and the Omega and worship And Jesus starts talking about worship. Before that, worship is not about us. It's a very simple thing, but it is life changing. Worship is not about us. It is not about what is pleasing to us. It is not about the buffet in which we can say, I like this, I like that, I don't like this. It is not about talking to a worship about our personal preference. Worship is about God. And everything that happens here from you to I, it is about what we offer to God and offering to God invites us to be the best and the better version of ourselves and everything that we do is the best we possibly can and then invoke God to bless it so that it is enhanced a few steps beyond our capacity. There is nothing that we can offer before God's excellence that is sloppy. There is nothing we can offer before the one who loves us abundantly in ways that are kind of flippant. We come before the one with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Worship is about God. And every time we gather here, we, cont we, we constantly bring that into focus. It is about God. It is not about me. It is not about rituals. It is not about anything. It is about God. And once we get that focus, it is about God. Worship takes on an entire 
entirely different meaning. And what we receive from worship is not the kind of satisfaction where we go and say, well, I don't know if I like that part of that worship. Oh, that sermon was so boring. I know you can say that, that's okay. Because what we do when we come to worship is to constantly focus on would, I, would that have been pleasing to the one who is the source of all blessings? Did I seek and find God's presence when I gathered at that sacred space in that sacred time? Was I an offering that is worthy of the one who is the maker and sustainer of the universe? So Jesus says this. Now don't take this literally. In this text there are a lot of things you don't want to take literally. Jimmy Carter did and know what that brought him. Don't take it literally. This is what Jesus says. So you come before the altar and you want to make an offering and you think you have wrong against your brother or your sister. Now don't get up and leave. But Jesus says that. Leave everything behind. Go and make it right before your brother and your sister and then come back and finish your worship. Huh? No, don't do that. So I got all confused. How does a church ever survive with this kind of a dilemma? So as you know what I would do. Went and checked what Fred Craddock had to say. And Fred said, watch out how you work this text. Worship can become a circus if everybody got up from their pews after listening to this and started walking around and going to each other and saying, did I ever do anything wrong against you? If I did? And the person says, no, I don't think, no, 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 think hard. Did I ever do anything wrong against you? Because if I did, and after a couple of times, maybe that person would say, well, you know that one time when I came late to church and you kind of looked at me crossways and that really offended me. That is not what this text is about. It is not about seeking reconciliation for our own acceptance. What is happening in the story is that worship becomes authentic. That we worship with integrity. And in order for us to do that, we become a reconciling people so that we can reconcile with God. We say that in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who we want to collect debts from. It is authentic worship experience. What this text says is not just trying to ask for forgiveness of things we have done that we ought not to have done towards somebody else. God's, God's definition of sin always is what we do that affects others in a negative way. What we do that robs others of their God-given moment. What we do that robs others of the joy that God intends for all of us. To reconcile with your brother and sister is not just for us to check about our relationships and how our relationships account for harmonious living. It is more than that. What this text is saying is for us to become proactive 
active in our relationship with others. What have you done lately that makes somebody else's life enjoyable, add to somebody else's joy, make somebody else's life easy, cause somebody else to laugh the way you want to laugh. It is not just simply about if I've done something wrong. It is about the good that I've done somewhere. What have you done lately to reduce the misery quotient in your family, in your community, in the world? What have you done lately? We pray, Madison Avenue Christian Church, we pray all the time about the poor and the hungry and the lonely, the forgotten. What is it that we are doing about the hungry, the lonely, the forgotten, the alienated, the excluded? And the things that we do, I hope at the altar you recollect and said, we thank you God for giving us the opportunity to be able to make a difference where you have placed us. Because Madison Avenue Christian Church has a lot to give thanks to God for opportunities God has given it. But then go one step further. We cannot be stagnant to ask May tomorrow be better than yesterday. May we reach people who've been forgotten, neglected. That is what Jesus is talking about. Worship becomes authentic before the one before whom nothing is hid. God knows our heart. And if we truly want to have an encounter with the Holy One in the presence of the altar, what Jesus is saying is, check your thought process. Check your relationships. If you have offended someone, yeah, get it right. But more than that, start acting in ways where you add to the joy and the beauty and the goodness and the mercy in God's world. And the text goes on to talk about <clears throat> being perfect. Whoops. Be ye perfect as your God in heaven is perfect when you come before the altar be perfect. I'll pick up that theme when I come to the table. Be perfect. The moment I read that line, I closed the Bible. Boom. That is a no-go. There is nothing that I can claim where I can say I am perfect. Because we stand before the one who's perfect. Be perfect as your God is perfect. What does that mean? Oh, bear with me. Some of you have heard this story. I've said this a few years ago. I'm going to say it again. By the way, when I repeat a story, it is in a different light and it has a different accent. So pay attention to it. Kelly had this beautiful experience on Sunday. That is partly why Kelly went to church on Sundays. Because she can go with her dad to church on Sunday. And she knows that after worship, she and dad would go home and the most enjoyable thing for Kelly was to help her dad fix the car. I guess they should have had quite a car. Every Sunday it needed fixing. I think dad made it kind of a ritual. He came up with things to do so that he and his daughter can do stuff together. That's what happened in their garage. Every Sunday after worship, they worked on the car. 
But this Sunday, they really had to work on the car. So daddy is underneath working on something and he says, Kelly, get me a screwdriver. Kelly goes and finds the shiniest, most beautiful, beautiful screwdriver she could find and she gives it to him and he takes it and he says, no, nah, no, nah, not this. Give me another one. She finds someone, something a little not so good and after a bit, dad says, nope, that's not it. This goes on, four or five screwdrivers. Big ones, small ones. That says, no, it's not fitting. Very hesitantly, Kelly pulls out the last screwdriver she could find. A rusty screwdriver with a broken handle. She knows for sure this is not going to work. She hands the screwdriver to dad who's underneath the car. And in a few minutes, she hears her dad say, perfect, perfect. To come before the altar, to seek God in truth to offer ourselves as a living servant sacrifice willing to mend our own follies ready to act in faith to make a difference in the world where God has placed us even if it means going beyond our comfort zone coming before the altar if you listen carefully to the one who knows your heart you too can hear God respond Rusty, broken handled screwdriver I may be. In God's hands, you're perfect. In God's hands, you're perfect. To God be honor, power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen.
Please be seated. Every Sunday morning we come as performers. We are performing the act of worship for an audience of one. One of the most important moments and significant moments of our performance of worship every Sunday is when we come to this very part, the offering. We take things that we are given in life. Hopefully we would bring those to worship, to put at the altar, to lay upon the altar as one of our most significant performing acts of worship. Let us pray. Father God, we are indeed blessed at this church. We have a beautiful facility, amazing friends and fellow worshipers before you. Father, throughout the week as we are given things, endowed with things, blessed with things, help us to see those as they pass through our hands as opportunities to further your kingdom. Bless us in this moment as we bring our tithes, as we bring our offerings to you. We ask, Father, that the things that we have been given would be multiplied, increasing your glory through this community, through our efforts at this church. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We are about to partake in the elements that represent the broken body of Christ and the cup that we share. Authentic worship before the one with whom you cannot hide anything. So let's speak the truth then. What Jesus said was, if you have offended someone, if you have caused somebody hurt, make amends at the altar, before the altar. So turn back and ask this question then, to be authentic. What about the hurt that has been directed to me? What about the times where I have been wronged. What about the pain that I harbor? Often what I do is in reaction to what has happened to me, what I perceive as being wronged, and it is real. 
So what are you talking about, Jesus? Make man's before you come to the altar. This is what you do. You come before God and offer your pain, your hurt, and say, I don't want to live out of my pain and my hurt. <clears throat> I don't want to do wrong because I've been wronged. Grant me your healing. Grant me your mercy. Cleanse me. Take away those moments of hurt that I harbor so that I will not return anger with anger. That I will be filled with joy and your forgiveness. And that is what will come out of me. So come before the altar. Offer those moments and let God cleanse you. Make you whole. Set you on your way so that you can live as a kingdom builder. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. This is Christ's table, and he invites you to participate. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, creator and provider of all that is good, we come to this communion table preparing our hearts and minds to allow your spirit to fill us with new life. Help us to clear away any attitudes or ill feelings we may be holding on to so that we may be open only to your love and cleansing spirit. Teach us to use love instead of hate when we are feeling hurt or upset about the injustices of the world. We appeal to you for forgiveness of our sins against others and ask that you help us to reconcile with those we have hurt or offended. We thank you for your son Jesus who taught us how to love you 
and our neighbors, no matter how different from us they may be, because we are all your children. We thank you for these tangible emblems, the bread and the cup, which remind us of Jesus' love and sacrifice for all of us. Please bless them that they may nourish our spirits and guide us through the coming week to live our lives for your glory. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Hear now the words of institution as found in Mark chapter 14. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my body of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let us drink together. It's a beautiful day, it may be cold outside, but it's warm in here. We have lots of good friends and fellowship here. And if you've been visiting with us and you would like to become an official member of this church, please come forward during the singing of the final hymn. Or if you prefer a more private time, speak with Simon at a later time or one of the elders. Let us sing together.
I've heard Jen sing from the choir. I just heard her sing from here. She has a beautiful voice. <laughs> yeah. Jen has been part of this church family for quite some time. And it is, she's added so much joy to the life of this church. Today she comes forward to become an official part of Madison Avenue Christian Church. Jen, it gives me great joy to welcome you into the life of this church. Do you believe that Jesus is your Christ, the Son of the Living God? I do. You do. I do. Welcome to Madison Avenue. Thank you. I know that you'll continue to add to the joy of this church. My prayer is that this church would add to the joy in your life as well. God bless you, Jen. Welcome. Welcome. After I pronounce benediction, Jen and the elders will be down there and you can come and greet her. This Super Bowl is a little different from last year's Super Bowl. Huh? <laughs> but you can do this. You could say, next year, it would be a better Super Bowl. So, hoping that, have a wonderful rest of the day. God bless you. Peace of God be with you. Amen.